What's up, everybody? This is Abe Batchon, the CEO of BeatStars, and here is another special edition of the BeatStars Pay the Creators podcast here in Amsterdam, where we dive deep into stories and experiences of our music creators on the platform. Today, we got a super special guest, uh, a guy that's been doing his thing for a really long time, has been uh, a top seller on the platform for many years, has been kind of paving the way, especially from this part of the world, showing how young creators can make a living doing what they love doing. My guy, Yohor from Anyway Well Beats, I appreciate you coming out, man. Thank you, Abe. Thank you so much. I highly appreciate the meeting and yeah, thank you all guys. Uh, For sure, man. Nothing but love, you know. Hell yeah, man. Nothing so but love, it's, yeah. it's great to finally meet you in person. We've been you know, chatting it up for a long time online. Um, also, I got a special temporary uh, uh, co-host uh -huh. here, uh, Lee, Lee Owen from the BeatStars team, also AKA Levi Beats, who's a really, really dope music producer who's probably got a lot of great insight for us today too. So, so let's get into it, man. Let's take take us back into um, you know the early days. You know, take us back to where you initially found interest in um, you know music production and and how you kind of got into it. Yeah. Uh, before actually I started, I just wanted to again thank you all guys. Abe, you like changed our lives. Uh, there are four producers in our team, as you know, and um, I have like. I think that later we will have a like film, big big cinema, just like to show everything which happened inside, which only me and guys know. But overall, it's amazing, and that's all because of you. Thank you. No nah, man, without without your guys' great music, we wouldn't we wouldn't be sitting here. So thank you. Thankful to thank you, you too. Again. Hell yeah. So actually, my uh, production way started in uh, when I was thirteen. So it's like more than half of my life. Um, First, I started as a like rapper. I just tr tried to make some bars, and later I started production. Then my own like small studio, just recording artists, and then I was going deep and deep into production, just trying to learn. Um, and then, like it's seven years passed. Then uh, we met with guys, uh, Dan and Max. Uh, they're actually from Vitebsk, where I'm from, uh, and I told them like, let's create a team. Like, you are like talented producers like you have this taste of music and let's just start let's i don't know where it's going to lead but let's start let's do something and then we'll see and it took for us like two years and a half uh just to be full-time music producers yeah so but guys produce like also more than half of their life that's so dope it's, that's dope so it's, you know a lot of I, I noticed like a lot of producers on on beat stars usually are solo you know, they kind of do their own thing and, and mm -hmm. they're kind of introverted in a, in, a, in a way, you know, where did like, where did it like the idea of you wanting to like build a team and like having mm -hmm. multiple collaborators and, and then how do you share the shine in a way? So, you know what I'm saying? Like, how do you, how, how is there no friction in between? Like when you have a group, you know what I mean? Cause you always hear about groups breaking up after yeah. a, a few months, but how have you guys been able to kind of keep it together and, and go this long? Actually, it's uh, it's really it's it's really hard to be like a team and you know split different things. Um, but overall, it started just just a, as an idea because I was always looking for like beats and I knew that uh, guys produce great beats. And I told them like, let's create a team. Let's start from like anything. I I created like even a Facebook page, like SoundCloud account. No money, just literally nothing we started from zero i was adding like uh, rappers on facebook so i was just letting him know that hey check our beats we have something and our first sale was like 30 bucks and uh it was just like whoa we can earn money from making music in one more month we sold exclusive for like 200 dollars and that was a pivot moment when like we just show it's our like parents like, see, that's music. It, it's not like just the kind of air. It's That's what we produced. We made it and we sold it and it works. And step by step, like after all that, yeah, that lead to where we are. But um, I was always like a pretty like social man, you know, like trying to connect people yeah. to see their best sides because um, like maybe that time where it was needed, guys didn't have these intentions, uh, vision, just like to create their own brand. So let's start like mm -hmm. as a team because it's easier, you know. Actually, you 
you promote like one brand, uh, we have different beats, different visions. So, and we always discuss our beats, mm. like what's good here, what, what's not. And, uh, and finally it works. It works better, you know, because the more experience you get through yourself, uh, the better, because uh, you have these different visions and ideas of how your music can sound. Yeah. And sometimes it's like, ah, then I, can, I disagree with you. I disagree. It's, it doesn't sound it. Let's, let, let's try. Let's release uh, two versions. Like we have a beat, which was, it, it's called uh, Feel Good. Mm -hmm. And firstly, it was produced without 808s at all. It was just kind of symphony. And um, it wasn't salt at all. Like, and we we're like, let's add 808. And then it's kind of banger. And I have, mm. I have so much stories. I, I, yeah. I, I want to tell you a sh uh, really short one. Yeah. Um, a guy uh, from Kazakhstan, he's called Diaz. Mm -hmm. It's our like um, genius, no? Like just guy who can like produce amazing beats. And he had- but What is he like? What is he really strong in? Is he strong like on the, on the melodies? Like what is he mi mixing? Like uh, the, this, this feeling of like industry is melodies, drums, and his own approach to like producing beats. And uh, we met him in January 2017. So it's finally four of us. Mm -hmm. And he was selling beats somewhere like in a Russian social network called uh, Vkontakte. Uh -huh. And he had beat, I think you know this beat, it's called In My Tempo. Mm -hmm. And he sold exclusive rights for this beat for like 30 bucks. Oh my God. 30 bucks. I told him, bro, we need to do something with it. Right? He, that guy who you sold the rights to, let's try to do something. Uh, that guy uh, was like, I don't know, sh like Shadow. He was now where we, we didn't know how he used this beat. We just like, right, he just right. lost, you know? Yeah. Um, then we sent him one, $100 to his card. Right. Let's back this beat, bro. Let's back this beat to the game. If he if he write back anything, okay. Let's but but that guy is still we don't know where, where he is. So actually, <laughs> and and after we released this beat on Beat Stars, in four months it's already generated more than two k. Wow. Hmm. Yeah, and um, since that period it was like more than five k. Nice. And that's the beat I think where it all started from. Was that beat? I mm, think he was reposting God. it. I probably reposted that. Yeah, one. and yeah. and it. And, it was before it was 2017 it was um not current version of beat stars it was right. previous when oh, main yeah. feed was like oh, big, big sure yeah. it was like on the whole <laughs> yeah. yeah and i think that where our like popularity came from a bit so st step by step it was yeah like, it was just the beginning but it was so much like fun it yeah man that's crazy. like one of the the best part of our job is just like listening to music on a platform and and uh discovering like great new music yeah. and just clicking that repost button or that playlist button and that could just start a whole whole journey you know for yeah. a producer and we've we've seen it so many so many different times now you got four guys in the group man um so i'm just trying to understand how you guys all contribute to the brand right anyway well is it mm -hmm. each guy kind of sits at home in their bedroom making their their own beat and then mm -hmm. you guys are just releasing them together or is it like really like collaborative to a point where someone starts an idea and they pass it around to maybe another mm -hmm. one of the guys and they kind of finish the idea or is it more strategic you guys have built that group strategically in a way where you just have more music to release more frequently is that is that kind of like the mm -hmm. the strategy or explain to me like how that how it works a little bit um so actually like if I have a minute before exp uh, explaining mm -hmm. this, I want to tell you that we are well, we're working on uh, regular jobs. Like, mm. Really, we all, but, and especially Diaz, he told me, bro, I'm so grateful to you because if not you, I was, I would be working somewhere in police right now mm -hmm. because he, he had actually diplomacy, like this degree and mm -hmm. it, well, it was not him. But uh, back to your questions, how we produce the beats. So actually, uh, mostly we produce, um, beats separately mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. everyone has their own ideas uh but i think that this magic happens uh when others producers and people with a lot of experience just look at your beat your music your product and say you what's good and what's what's not and sometimes these deci decisions mm -hmm. are like they pivotal and they change a lot so we actually discuss beats like What's good here? What's not? You have a great idea, but these drums like maybe sounded a bit like this. Let me master it, and I will like 
change the sound and then oh oh i have this like wow effect so um actually we work in like separately but we discussed so it's a feed, really like a feedback group yeah you guys are really like providing that yeah. feedback to get better you ever get into a situation where you know the feedback the feedback came in from one of the, one of the guys. You're like, "Hey, man, you're just hating on me, man. This is a great beat." Or do you take it? You you or you have that? You guys have that mutual respect for each other as creators to like yeah, really sure. take each other's feedback. We, we we we're like you know like really like brothers. We are friends. Yeah, Max is my classmate. Yeah. I remember him for like ten from when we were 10, 12. and you know, we we did just like we had so much experience. There were times where we had these hard times and we couldn't agree about specific things and uh almost like anywhere well was like almost broken like but i was always trying to find this way to connect people connect guys and to find this because um if you don't create something you have to destroy it but i always trying to over over build something new and beautiful over what we have because i'm not perfect guys aren't perfect we all in these hard relationships when you need to like um uh split money split different ideas mm -hmm. uh have this common vision of how to move so actually our current um biggest idea and what we are going uh to work on is to have our own uh podcast videos like of production tips and this different just yeah. to go online and show all these things yeah. because we're always like moving you know like from saint petersburg to like belize to, to vilnius and all these things sometimes you need to Need some just stability. to have some time some stability yeah and mm -hmm. uh we are working on it so you may expect like a podcast from anywhere well and oh. the different things yeah we are working on like production things right now and a uh, format overall but but we will come you you said um like you started started producing at like 13 14 years old yeah um you you come from like a musical background or your your family or or who put you like who kind of inspired you to actually get, get going? Actually, it's all started from a spark. I have no musical education at all, so I'm just like I was like, oh, this sounds great. I I I'm, I want to rap on this beat. My first raps were like absolutely awful, you know, <laughs> like, but then just step by step because I feel it because I love it because I love the. I love to express myself, you know, like in first it started from raps, then beats, and I always try to widen myself. I also mm -hmm. love to take in photos and, and just, just being creative. You know, it's very important to understand that creativity is, it's, it's kind of not skill, it's maybe like 50-50, but it's the way how you live, mm -hmm. is the way how you go through streets, you know, how you look at people, how you feel yourself. When you have this, um, feeling of creativity uh, that you create something with your energy your aura then then magic happens for real and, and there were so many like situations which show like you need just to be this you need to have this flow of energy like always and when you have these right things will happen yeah lee what's on your mind man you got you got something to ask no about. i i i think that's I think that's really um, key as well, you know. I think some some people get like too wrapped up in it all, but um, being a producer myself, I, f I find that like imprinting a bit of yourself in the music, your energy. So I really like that. What you said there was really really cool. I know, like I've sat down with so many because you know I rap right, and so I I know when I talk to a, like a lot of producers, so when or when I'm listening to a beat when I'm trying to write something, you know, I can tell when a producer also um has songwriting abilities too because mm -hmm. like you could just hear the build up the the melodies the chords the the chorus like you could tell that producer in their mind knows exactly what kind of voice what kind of tempo of delivery what kind of cadence from an artist and i love those producers that make beats that kind of just like already Kind of give me a canvas to experiment experiment with. So, mm -hmm. you think having that background of being an artist first before producing has kind of helped you hack away to make music for for other artists? You think exactly, yeah, that, that works like this. And uh, a producer from our team, Dan, it's absolutely amazing, like songwriter and creator. Mm -hmm. He 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 always raps freestyles. He has this amazing feeling of industry and he's the only guy from 
our team who has this musical education. Right. All others not, but, and I completely agree with what you were talking yeah, about. Yeah, I've, I've seen some sessions from t- some of our top sellers. They'll just like mumble, like mumble some some lyrics, mumble some like yeah. words, some mum- like on their beat while they're like, as they're, after they finish making it. And then they'll r- remove that track, of course, but then they'll just kind of understand and feel what else to add to it or yeah. what to remove from it. Because once you hear a vocal on the production, you can kind of tell, um, is there enough room for this artist to really express themselves the right way? Um, yeah. You know, a lot of young producers, you know, they're yeah. overproducing nowadays. Uh, exactly. You know, some, you know, it's part of the learning process. I, you know, absolutely. but less less is more most of the time, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And and we were going through this way, and uh, we had these like uh, type of beats which were like overproduced, but. Diaz, for example, from Kazakhstan, he, he he knows how to, like, how to make things smaller or bigger and put them in the right place. His beats like has like amazing quantity of instruments, but they mm. sound good. Uh, but on certain stages of our like production and discussing all things, we were talking about it, guys. We need less instruments here. Mm-hmm. It, mm-hmm. it 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 doesn't sound better. You just like y- your ears, like they uh have this like I- idea of final instrument but it's not final you will have vocals here so mm-hmm. just like try to rap and imagine like how artists will sound here so yeah it's it's very important yeah because yeah. the vocal yeah the vocal can sit like an instrument and fill yeah. up so many different spots and, i remember we were talking when we talked last week you were saying that you kind of didn't really have the full like support from your family and your dad right initially when you first kind of started um he was not support, but skeptical yeah, about the, absolutely. you know, the, the path that you were going absolutely. in. Um, how did it, like, how did it feel like proving, proving your dad wrong a little bit mm-hmm. and like showing them, you know, your success? Actually, we all in team, we were like, you know, I, I want you to understand the context, you know, here in Amsterdam, somewhere in USA, it's, it's, it's different life. It's different feeling of music scene, of creativity, of everything. The places where we are from, uh, you just like born, you go to school, you go to university, if you're lucky, and then you go to somewhere like fabric, taxi, and the different stuff, you know. And parents which were born in USSR, they don't just they they never saw that people like successful with music with this stuff. They just right. just they they say, hey, okay, music is good. Uh, it's your hobby. Okay. Okay, but you need to go to work somewhere just to have money for that. For sure. So, actually, I was not telling my parents that like we have a team and we produce beats and we sell them <laughs> after we made 10k per month. First 10k, I remember it was um, it was October 2019, um, and I just showed my parents that that's what we got, and they were like, especially dad. My mother was mother is mother. Yeah, she always. She always loves you. No, she she has this like she likes help you like in any condition, you know. But my dad was like, "You made it." That's what dads are for. Dads, dads, dads are. Yeah, you made it. You like, real. like <laughs> congrats. Like and and same things was with guys. Like their parents were just like, "Whoa!" And it it was it inspired parents as well, right? You know, because all of us have this kind of small or big dreams, which maybe like oh, we're, we're like implemented in life and not so but yeah it's, 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 it's gotta be a great feeling yeah it, it, it was amazing for sure you know we all i guess you know we all grow up in different parts of the world and we get inspired by our environments and our surroundings you know our you know who, who were you know who were some of your early like inspirations in music that you grew up listening to oh this was uh, th- actually where guys uh, like who I, I can't admire of them right now because I, you know I'm like grow up but it was like and um hu- hustle rap with a lot of like ru- rude words and but oh, anyway I respect them and like okay it was kind of my 12 I, I was 12 like you know but overall um we were growing from I, we were discussing just these things with guys recently and honestly like we can't feel trap music as much as we feel the music of 2010s. Mm. This 
the kind of rap from uh, 2000 to 2010. For us, it was kind of golden era of music and production and Timbaland, uh, Scott Storch, mm -hmm. um, many amazing producers and songs, which has this feeling that mm, barely someone can repeat it right now. Yeah. Because, you know, we have different scene right now. We are all there. Maybe it's just like our things, but overall, I think that this golden era of production for us it was 2000 to 2010, so, somewhere, somewhere like there. So was it mostly like just hip hop? Hip hop yeah. was, was hip hop. Uh, yeah, mostly hip hop. Yeah, hip hop raps. And I still have this all these playlists with like top songs from like Buster Rhymes, Peter Sand, mm. Jeremiah. I love them. I, I will listen to them my whole life. You know? But my experience, yeah, was from these artists mostly, producers. So, um, you you did mention you touched you touched up a little bit upon like moving around from different country to different country yeah. over and over, trying to find like creative inspiration. And then when you get, you know, kind of find you find, find yourself like empty in a certain place you're moving on to the next one and and during this time there's a lot of like turmoil going on especially you know around the world right there's a lot of things going on um how do you man how do you deal with all the different changes that are happening all around you but you're you know staying locked in i guess on your goals because a lot of people will see what's happening outside and just just fucking give up you know what i mean because life is real not you know outside outside of your bedroom so like what what keeps you going yeah um mm, i i have a, a story like you know um I, I was talking to lee like before we started that uh i think that unity is unity between people this spiritual feeling of that we are all like pretty same we have same wishes just to have friends have parents um have aims, have dreams. Um, in 2020, it was a really hard period in my life. I lost my parents, and um, because of you know these things, they like they they are like in my soul. You know, I I I am so grateful to my parents for everything. But I started feeling especially harder this like uh, division, like and what it makes with people and how how it's bad. And uh, after that, COVID started uh, this like war between Russia and Ukraine, and uh, we didn't know like what to do. We were living in Saint Petersburg for some time. We were together, and then guys went to like Georgia, Tbilisi for some time. Uh, I'm I'm there, so I feel this kind of split very hard, and I want to reunite people. So I would say that this special chemistry happening when you have your people around together mm -hmm. like not only online online right, is, right. is a part of but there were moments when we were creating amazing beats like our top selling beats just being together when i was like coming to Tbilisi, for example guys yeah, just like hey so let's create something and th 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 that's how it works so you guys always just, had a like support system for each other yeah through it yeah all. yeah you, you you just have that people who you want to like work for create for love you love them they love you so this like it's it's the main thing so just have to talk about collaborations it's a it's a hit you know you need to collaborate with producers and be like you you um that's dope man and then and god god rest your, your soul the soul your parents your family and and everyone you know but i, I know a lot of those you know challenges in your in your life probably at the time felt so like destructive but definitely transformed you into yeah. a, a different human being that had to you know yeah maybe create in different ways you know su support Definitely. support yourself in different ways and you know a lot of those hardships shape us so yeah that's actually how you grow in life the more challenges you have like mm. My my father was always telling me like Ihor, you know, um, everything's happening suspiciously good right now. I I I need this struggle. I need these challenges. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking about it. How like we feel ourselves, and it's it's so important too. Like when uh, you have 
good things around, good people, everything. You just need to keep creating, keep pushing, keep doing, and uh, don't think that it's la- the latest point. You always mm-hmm. have mm-hmm. this where to grow, so just, just, just need to continue. Yeah, and I, I think that's a great lesson for a lot of um, young producers who are looking for just like instant success or and uploaded two or three beats and they haven't made a yeah. sale and they're like, fuck this, this is, <laughs> it's over, it's over for me. And hey, promo, does, s- promo doesn't work. Hey, five, five bucks per day, promo doesn't work. What's happening? Yeah, everyone's <laughs> yeah. complaining about, you know, something, right? And, um, you know, maybe a lot, maybe those, those folks haven't seen enough, like, challenges in their life to, to, to get through it. Being yeah. great at something is not an overnight trip, yeah. you know. 100%. Um, you were talking about a little bit last week when we spoke about how moving from SoundClick to BeatStars was like super transformative for you. you know? Oh, actually, I was talking about like being a rapper and looking for beats on SoundClick. Right. So I was I was not like a producer uploading beats to SoundClick. No, we were uploading beats like to BeatStars. Got it. Got it. Once. Got it. So you're looking for beats to rap on. Yeah. Yeah. So I was just looking for apps and. That's where idea to like create a team came from, mm. just from SoundClick. I saw that there are guys who like from from our own city. That there was was a guy. He's like pretty popular, and I was like, Damn, let, let's try to do it. But we were selling our beats on BeatStars firstly. Got it, got yeah. it. Um, I think we will need like around five hours of interview just to share everything <laughs> we have. I know it's, we have it like. How Such many beats you guys got on the pro on your profile now? Right now, a bit more than five hundred. Damn. But uh, we 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 sold many beats, like exclusive, not not many, not many exclusively, but uh, I, I I would sell two hundred beats right now to someone. Please buy them. You know, just 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 because <laughs> right, the, just right. because you need to understand that uh, the quality is the key, and the quantity on on some mm. point mm-hmm. it's become not necessary. I, I know guys like on BeatStars with 3,000 beats and, right. and, and more. So it, it works also. But for sure. us, for sure. anywhere well, we are trying to like show people our best beats. Uh, best. You, you never know. Our one of the top selling beats, the flow, it was like four months somewhere. We, we didn't know like either it's banger or not. Uh-oh. But then people were buying it and on BeatStar search system and top chart, it mm-hmm. was getting higher, higher, higher. And we were like, whoa, damn, it's, it's banger. It's like right now it's more than 1 million plays. Yeah. Uh, by the way, there is a playlist on BeatStars with like uh, uh, 1 million plays. Uh-huh. It's uh, for producers who overall have one more than 1 million plays. We have like four beats with more than 1 million plays. So, okay. Overall, like it's more, almost 24 millions. Damn, uh, plays. Yeah, but it, it's amazing like how it actually works. And we have this beat honey humble oh, yeah, honey they are like <laughs> those are classics <laughs> yeah yeah it's it's, it's classic that's how it works you just like but we were like promoting them from from nowhere right you know a lot of producers i i, I know this for a fact because you know i've sat down with like you know some of the top selling guys and sometimes we'll make a bet with each other on which which beat will be the one that will like take off I'm like no it's gonna you know they're they're so sold on you know this one beat this this is this is the one this is the one I'm like, nah, bro, this is the one. Because I think a lot, of, a lot of producers get kind of, you know, stuck with just loving their latest work, loving their yeah. latest work. And they forget about like the gems that they, they produced in the past. Yeah. Um, you talked a little bit about like some of these specific type of beats like Honey, you know, mm-hmm. that has been living in, I just heard it yesterday, dude. I was just like searching for, what was I searching for the other day? And it just, it just popped up. Like, there's just beats in your catalog that will have a much longer shelf life than, you know, some of the other yeah. stuff for some known reason, just like, that's it. It just resonates. Yeah. It just resonated with more people, with millions of people yeah. around the world. And I'm sure you're not, you're not able to predict which ones are the ones that, yeah. you know, are, are those, well, right? <laughs> almost. Almost. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, when, when you listen to like thousand beats monthly, and you see like which are like top selling on YouTube, beat stars, uh, anywhere. You, I have this feeling of like it's going to be banger mm-hmm. because it it has this. You know, I have this feeling inside. You have this feeling inside of like what's good, what's not, what's sure. hit. It's just like you practice it also. Yeah. So 
Right, well, you start, when you you start learning. To, you, you, yeah, yeah, you have like, oh, this beat is most definitely. But we have our own uh, like um, calculations of how to like uh, how to look at stats and say that oh, this beat is banger and this is not, and it takes like around half a year, mm -hmm. but it works all the time. Some of the best producers they'll continue to promote even like older beats that perform really, really well to like a new audience because to them, you know, it's new, right? Um, and that's kind of like getting people introduced to their to their um, their their catalog initially, mm -hmm. and then people will come and check out the rest of it. Mm -hmm. What is your approach with like marketing your beats? Like, how do you choose, you know, which ones to really spend money on to like drive mm -hmm. drive traffic to? <laughs> Actually, it's a kind of secret for me. Like, why people love these beats like for three four years, and it's continuing, it's going, it's going on, and like maybe it's classic. Okay. But for me, I sometimes don't understand like why people love humble, beat humble so much. They they keep buying it. They keep buying it. <laughs> we want to push some like new beats, but um, uh, replying to your question like uh, quantity of plays without promo, without promo, then free downloads. Mm -hmm. um, then we look at uh, how it performs uh, within our audience. We have like we have uh, like tens of thousands on like uh, MailChimp, mm -hmm. our database, mm -hmm. you know, like we have these uh, email campaigns. Yep. So we, we look at like, we we need like from four months to half a year to see like that the bid, the bid performs well. But right now we have a bid which was produced in September and it's, it's definitely like vendor. Mm. Yeah. And it's spots. It's called spots. What, um, just so like forgive a little bit of context and inspiration to like some producers what 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 has like generated the most revenue i guess from from one beat like what's the most you've ever generated from like just one one beat selling it non exclusively mm. i think it's around 70k 70k yeah just from one beat yeah and you don't sell that exclusively no right <laughs> <laughs> we had offers you know yeah i have a story where we had pretty great beat and they were offering like around five hundred dollars. I don't know, of course, of course no. <laughs> um, respectfully. <laughs> oh, respectfully, yeah, yeah. Of course. You know, you know, because there are people from industry, not yeah. from industry. You never right. know. Like yeah. I'm sitting on beat stars every day for the last seven years. You can't find a day when I was not doing it. I always search for something new. I look at producers, I analyze, I'm working a bit like machine mm. with, with soul <laughs> so um and yeah but finally we finished at 7k for this beat so so actually because i know the price and that we aren't going to sell it like for 500 dollars. but then in a month mm -hmm. the artist came and so what is so it was like our biggest sale from exclusives i mean that's a huge like that's a huge testament especially towards the people that are always saying you know, they're always kind of like shitting on the internet producers. You know, why are you selling your beats for twenty, thirty dollars a pop? And you've you guys have proven that one beat can generate like seventy thousand dollars. And in the industry today, there's no industry producers getting seventy k for a beat. That's that's not even happening today. So you guys have like you know proven to the world that you know your piece of work, your art, could yeah. could be worth a lot more than what you think it is. It's actually amazing. I think if uh, we were not a team with like Diaz and Diaz produced this beat honey and mm -hmm. maybe like he would sell it for one hundred dollars somewhere on like <laughs> Russian social network <laughs> somewhere. But yeah, um you just need to like create in like looking at what others producers do, do what you feel uh, right and because you never know. You also have this side effect of this beat. Mm -hmm. We promote honey even right now right. because uh, I know that many people know it, but for new people, like they hear, like, "Oh, that's a great beat. I need to check this catalog." And um, yeah, as you're seeing, kind of like, you know, the internet producers kind of changing the narrative and how internet producers are now like producing some of the biggest hits in the world. Mm. You know, um, yeah. being from where you're you're from, did you ever envision? like one of your beats being picked up by like a bigger artist and turning into, you know, a big hit. Was that ever like a goal or was just 
entrepreneurship and building your own business, like initially just kind of like the main goal? Hmm. I think that there there is always a place for kind of kind, kind of miracle, you know. You never know that there, there is a guy from Kazakhstan called Iman Bek, I think you know him. So he produced this remix for Saint John mm -hmm. and he got the Grammy. The guy, like 18 years old, he was working somewhere on like a railway station, just they just uh, released this remix. So he produced it for like uh, either 40 minutes or two hours. I don't remember. But yeah. anyway, mm -hmm. so I think that uh, I'm, I'm also ha I have this like uh, vision and approach that you never know uh, where it will come from. So you just need to do what you feel right in the moment. And that will bring you to the right side, you know, right way. So you just need to keep Keep doing what you do. Has there been any like any 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 songs that that have come out of your guys' uh, catalog of beats that have pretty pretty substantial? Uh, yeah, one song. He, he it's actually like by Oxymoron. It's one of the best like, Russian rappers. Yeah, and we had amazing like song song from him, and that was a kind of because you know we we were listening to him like you know it it was also kind of new. You always like oh 10k per month from like beat stars per month oh. Oxymoron. Oh, and you always like, oh, I have this feeling of like, and you never know what, what's going to happen. No, and it, it, it's so beautiful. So just like, need to keep pushing. Do you got anything to add? But, no, I, well, I just wanted to, because I know you mentioned about you've earned 70K on like one beat, but that's just like the upfront, right? So that's just from licenses. Mm. Are you kind of like utilizing? Beatstars publishing to kind of like collect your publishing on the other side as well. Yeah, we have uh, we had a um, a film. Uh, it was released on HBO with our beat the flow. Mm -hmm. So it's it's actually generated more than 10k. Cool. Already, yeah. So and so we have another another placement because it. I actually uh, I I was really surprised because the guy who just purchased the beat here yeah, he had less great songs and all this stuff, but. Then I just score Sony and you like, whoa, yeah. 10, 10, 10K, just like wake up. Oh, that, that, that's <laughs> great. So actually, yeah. And Beatstars Publishing is like uh, the company who I can trust too, because, you know, like we invest in Beatstars at uh, promo, like the last five years, I think we invested more than $150,000 wow. per promo. Yeah. And it, it was always always like recopying. I, I I had no doubt that the promo is working <laughs> because the platform is working. Yeah, like all platforms right now, like on certain stage, they unstable, they have these bugs and but overall like it works. But you need to you don't need to be like, as you said, like one one time producer, like you produce you rely on one song or one hit. No, we were like planning our promo like uh, half a year uh, right. ahead, you know, like we have this strategy idea of how everything is working and that that's why it works. Yeah. So you need to, just like any business you have to, yeah. you have to invest in it, yeah. you know, you, and, and if, especially if you want to like accelerate the process of building a sustainable income, you know, um, any business needs to have, you need, you need to promote your business. Yeah. You need to market it, you know? Yeah. Um, but again, that's another like misconception. I think a lot of like young producers have, they, they think, I can just upload a beat and it's just automatically going to mm, sell for me. Yeah. And that's not how shit works. You know, you know, how, how do you, how does a restaurant attract yeah. new customers into their, into, you know, how, like, it's all about the presentation, yeah. the, the, the word of mouth, the, you know, offer giving away offers and discounts and things yeah. like that, you know? So you were saying how you're like the king of analytics, you're studying all these beats, <laughs> you're studying the charts, you're studying, you're studying kind of like, and and I think that's a lot of what you do is science. Is, is science. There's a lot of science to it. And yeah. I think, but how do you balance not falling into a trap of trying to fit in and make music like other people, but still also kind of maintain your guys's like originality mm -hmm. and sound? Because I know the online industry is different. Like you got to make music for everybody. It's, I compare it to the chef and the cook, you know, like cooks mm -hmm. are cooking for everyone. Chefs got their own signature sound for a specific, mm -hmm. um, you know, person, but how do you balance the chef and the cook kind of like dynamic still, still being able to have your own signature unique sound, but at the same time, making it available for like a mass public. Mm -hmm. uh, I would try to explain these, um, 
uh, every man like on this earth has um, this uh, creative energy, like the the flow which you like have, and uh, sometimes uh, it's experience. Uh, sometimes it's just uh, intuition that you have this. Oh, I want to produce this like this, and maybe sometimes like we discuss beats and uh, like. For example, me, I'm, I'm disagreed that it's going to sound like this. No, no, no changes here because my intuition tells me that it's going to be right. So uh, every of us has uh, own kind of production style and we are trying to uh, stick to it and just add these like uh, small, small things which are needed for like current industry. But I wouldn't say that our beats are like 100 percent are like contemporary and they sound like industry in 2023 i i would say no the the beats sound great but they have this like uh things from 2010 sometimes mm -hmm. special, mm -hmm. special sounds right. like tricks and so <laughs> we just like keep like creating what because artists uh, around you rappers like you are 28 artists like also 28 and they have this feeling of like 2000, 2010, sure. you know, and sometimes they just like follow them. Some love boom bap style. Mm -hmm. So they, they don't want to rap over trap beats. They want to boom bap. So they actually choose it. So we are trying to like um, produce what we feel. Mm -hmm. that, that's the main thing. And, and, on, oh, and over that, you know, because if you, if you don't feel like I, I know many, not many, but I know young producers who like, 16 years old, 17 years old, but already pr producing amazing beats. Like, mm -hmm. whoa, it's like, mm -hmm. yes, it's one man from like 1,000. But overall, he has this like feeling idea. How did he get it? I don't know, but it's it's actually great to follow yourself. So you're a fan of that, John, like that era of music too, you know, the 2000, the 2010, and you're, you're trying to like capture that same feeling and emotion, but still yeah. kind of updating, updating the sound. And I think a lot of producers get stuck with just making the now, like yeah. what's available now and not things that will have longevity. So yeah. going back to different eras and, you know, our ears have not changed. Great music is great music. Yeah. Whether you pull it up from the 60s, the 50s, the 70s, it doesn't matter. Like great music yeah. is great music. And um, you can definitely get inspiration and, you know, kind of challenge yourself to kind of resurface some of that stuff. And, but reintroduce it in a way that's still you, you know, yeah, which is dope. And I know <laughs> Lee Lee goes back and like makes a lot of like '90s R and B stuff, you know. Yeah. He's a, <laughs> but a lot of the like a lot of the best producers I think on B stars have like you know captured some captured an era somehow, you know. Yeah, they captured an era and they kind of updated it a little bit. They've updated it, you know. How do you how do you go about? sound selection and how do you stay up to date with just like you know your 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 uh library of sounds to kind of you know still still be able to capture the past mm -hmm. but also like provide something modern and new there are new amazing opportunities for production right now sound selection like different companies like native instruments uh they they have uh arturia you know like they, they they have these amazing an analog feeling, you know, like you just buy this keyboard, like buy special like, plugins and libraries for them, and they work amazing. They they have these sounds which are al already like uh, cleared. You don't have to like spend one hour just you know how to how to mix them right in the mix. But overall, our libraries, you know, like they have this basis, like mm -hmm. what we start from, uh, and of course we experimenting with new things, new plugins, new like libra libraries, and always learning for like new things. So you're always reinvesting. Yeah, sure. And I think that's another like, you know, misconception, right? <laughs> like people, don't, people, and it's tough. It's hard, you know, inve investing a lot of money into your, like your business now is probably worth multi-millions of dollars because of how much you've invested into it, whether yeah. it's promotion, marketing, and just the audiences that you've built, right? Yeah. But for a young producer that's just starting out, like it's almost impossible. You know, some some young producers barely can get a laptop going, right? So, how would you like? What would you what would you say to young people when like how, how you first started out with mm -hmm. not not too much to start with? Like, what what would be some of your advice for for some young people to start out with, just to mm -hmm. kind of get going? 
I think there are always like uh, free opportunities. Mm -hmm. Like you can find uh, plugins which you can download for free or libraries or just like use demo versions. I, I think there are a lot of them, especially today. Different trials, tryouts, uh, and mm -hmm. it's 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 not hard to save like fifty or one hundred bucks. Especially right now, uh, we have this subscription type of like everything. You know, mm -hmm. like you pay like for plugins like ten bucks per month, and you use them like as if they were cost like two thousand if you buy them out. So right now we have more opportunities. Just um, just just keep pushing and learning and. Mm -hmm. uh, don't stuck like to ideas like oh I can do this because I like have no money or have no no you just like you either have this feeling of like I want I will try I will do or you're not that's mm -hmm. so you just like keep keep finding like new opportunities fresh opportunities and uh, learn new things I think we live in the world where it's very very possible how um how important is um, mixing to you for you guys like what like how <laughs> <laughs> yeah very much yeah very much uh i think when we started um yeah it was like 2016 you know before before that we we were sitting together with guys and <laughs> we figured out that we didn't knew that mastering exists <laughs> 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 no we were like mixing beats like push limiter and th that's how and then we just learned that there is a mastering stage as well but uh i think it, it's mm -hmm. me who was in team like insisting on like clearing these sounds because as as a rapper as artist i always looking for new beats and you know sometimes i hear that something sounds bad here mm -hmm. that's why i don't want to buy this beat yep, because because or, or i want to buy it or I, I will remix it i will take trick out track stems because it, it should be changed sure so, so i was sure. always like guys snare is like it's too high right now need to lower it so and uh, these details um it's huge it can make yeah. or break a sale mm, yeah i remember just like yeah. streaming through beats and hear, hearing beats that man i was like okay well the arrangement is so cool like the the sound selection yeah, it was really yeah. dope but you know all the instruments are not really sitting well on the mix yeah. and and then it's super low in terms of you know volume and you couldn't couldn't get the full the full like yeah. inspiration <laughs> from it you know and then exactly. a lot of a lot of artists think that if you're buying it that way that's how it's going to be mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. so there's a difference between how you're presenting it on a on a stream on beat stars in terms of just you know people previewing what the sound will look like mm -hmm. but and and the difference between giving them the actual like unmastered wave files, the stems that they need to go, you know, get their own mix with, right? So first impression is everything, man. Yeah, we were listening like a lot of beats on Beat Stars, and sometimes we saw that the right top beats, which sound like so simple, they are yeah. almost unmixed. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I was like, damn, maybe we, we should not care about <laughs> this. Like, but finally, when I got like maybe hundred messages from guys like guys, your mix is so clean, so good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You need to have like courses, production courses, this, this stuff. I was, it's, I think it's 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 right way because you feel that it's right. You no, know? and that's where you back to yourself as well. If I don't believe that I need to like push this bus higher, I I will not do it. So just yeah. follow yourself, work on mixing, mastering, and this year is a bit like. Uh, new for us i mean uh, we purchased couple analog things like for mixing especially mm -hmm. and it's also a new like uh it's new like st stage like new new level for us because we work with this and we see how it changes and 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 we we understand now mm -hmm. why beats of like scott storch or timberland they, they sound they, the way they sound because analog changes a lot of things mm. in mixing and mastering and something you do in digital like it takes 10 minutes you will right. do it for two minutes on analog because it has these like you have more uh, opportunities to create something have these creative effects and uh, you you can you can play somewhere where digital doesn't doesn't allow you just because it's impossible 
Yeah. So it's it's I, w- I would say it's another like advice for producers just to just understand that it will help you as well. But you need to first start on digital. Yeah, yeah. Our ears, you know, gravitate towards more natural, organic feeling of music. So, do you guys use any like live instrumentation in some of your music? Do you guys? Yeah. Uh, yeah, guitars. Guitars Guitar. sometimes. Yeah, we we work with artists like uh, with guitarists, and mostly it's guitars. Sometimes it's, it's vocals, or like picks and different boxes. But overall, it's mostly guitars. So, oh. yeah, you've kind of since 2017, you've kind of seen this industry change pretty quickly. You know, we yeah. went from the whole world kind of like not really understanding what beats are you know mm. like what beats are even you know um and now you got major artists like bad bunny and rod wave and Lil nas x and all these massive massive artists buying beats on beat stars yeah. and you're um seeing the whole narrative change like where do you think where do you think this whole shit's gonna go <laughs> next man like where what's what's gonna happen next um i, I actually i'm a bit confused about like future i i can't predict it like in 100 percent how it's yeah, going to be yeah. uh but i think that uh some some things we can like change uh some we not but these are uh, artificial intelligence things we need to just accept and to use uh, as an instrument mm-hmm. because when you mm-hmm. use everything as instrument like it works on you it's good Right. If 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 you fall if you fall into this idea of like it's not instrument it's like the way h- how you have to like feel yourself um, uh, I I think I thought I told cl- clearly but I think that uh, when you know you can't produce like I I can't produce like he can produce like a r- real banger because music will always need a man mm-hmm. human human ear human feeling because that's what we do like for people like we are who we right. are you know? right so you feel like ai is going to be like the next next instrument next instrument yeah. the next kind of like sample tool that yeah that we're going to incorporate as a yeah. inspiration in our work right yeah have you have you used the um the beat stars uh i le- think lemonade i think tool? i think not yet uh but we will definitely uh, try it because yeah. we have like kind of project we are working on and mm-hmm. we have this like wor- workflow we need some time to implement to try mm-hmm. Just, mm-hmm. so yeah play around with it man i'd love your like your feedback on it and kind of like what you think and we've got some 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 new updates on on it for oh i, I, mm-hmm. I actually messaged, messaged you about it the other day yet like right we're gonna set up set up a call because i want you to you know talk with uh the lemonade guys that mm-hmm. are, are building that tool because we're, right. yeah we're working on a working on a tool that is really tailored for guys like you that have a large catalog and are looking to kind of like scale themselves in a way, you know, in a, in their own protective way. So in our own private way. So we're excited to see AI evolve and empower people, but you know, there's, there's AI out there that's also looking to, you know, completely like replace creators mm-hmm. unethically and it's a scary world. So got to figure out a way to balance, you know, <laughs> balance all that. Of course. Um, you heard, man, it was, it was great talking to you. I don't know, Lee, do you have any like last, last things? For- yeah. I was just kind of going back to similar to what Abe said. Like if, if you, if there was like one piece of advice, you would give your younger self. Now, if you wanted to start out as a young producer now, what would that be? What would that piece of advice be? Just one thing. Keep doing what you believe in. It, oh. If it it's short, like simple, <laughs> but but it it has you know our mind as like as instrument have this idea of oh it's uh, it's like it's too simple. But when you just just try to like understand this phrase and to uh, look inside of yours, you will find that actually it's the key because you will be best in who you are. Mm-hmm. not the world cr- creates you you create yourself in mm. this world and that's how everything works 
Well, man, it was a pleasure talking to you, man. Thank you for sitting Bye. down with us and had, you, come, yeah. coming out coming out to Amsterdam and sharing your story and inspiring others and um, appreciate what you've done on the platform, what you continue to do with your with with your other collaborators and congrats on all your success, man. You fucking inspire me, man. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> let's go. Appreciate it. <laughs> Well, thank everybody thank for you. watching the Pay the Creators podcast episode in Amsterdam. Um, look out for this episode to drop really soon. Yep. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Go. Thank you, brother. Nice to finally meet you, man. <laughs>